Hi everyone, um, Andrew from Remote Tribe here. Uh, happy to be back online. Um, I've got a really special guest today, and that's Oli from Bebein Hub in the Philippines. Um, so Remote Tribe is a um, community for digital nomads and remote workers who've been on the market for about three years. I myself have been a digital nomad for the last seven years, and I'm always looking for the next hotspot, trying to bring guests and talk about that and trying to move people into remote working. Um, so Orly is doing something amazing in the Philippines. Um, he has a really huge community of digital nomads and now he's doing also remote working retreats um, in the Philippines and he's probably the best known name in the, uh, in the Philippines when it comes to digital nomads. So when you think digital nomads in the Philippines, that's Orly. Um, and I'm going to let him introduce himself and talk about Baby Inhub and what's the plan for this year's remote working retreat. So go ahead, Orly. Hi, thank you so much, Andrew, for uh, the introduction and uh, welcome to the Philippines. You finally made it. So I'm in Chicago uh, right now, the, the surfing capital of the Philippines, and I have to tell you it's amazing. All right. Th thank you, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, hello, guys. I'm Orly Darnayla. I'm the founder of Bye Bye and Hub here in the Philippines. And uh, to, to give you a quick background about Bye Bye and Hub, we are the we would say we are the second home and office of the remote workers and digital nomads in the country as we provide you a safe space. At the same time, a uh, booking platform for uh, remote workers that who wanted to stay uh, longer to work and stay and play in, in the Philippines. Thank you so much, Andrew. Awesome. So, so from what I understand, well, you guys have a network of co-working and co-living spaces in the Philippines, and now you are going to create the remote working retreats for people all over the world who want to come in a very special place, very beautiful place like the Philippines, and work from there. Um, so tell us a bit about the workations in 2023, um, and you know what, how the idea came on, and uh, what do you want to achieve with the retreats? Yeah. So, uh, so Andrew, uh, just uh, to, to let everyone know, uh, the digital nomads or the remote work in the Philippines is relatively new, you know. And uh, this, this uh, project or uh, proof of concept uh, accelerated during pandemic, you know. So uh, I, I would say in the Philippines, uh, the, 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 remote, the rise of the remote working digital nomads and workation uh, became, became huge during pandemic. And we were fortunate that we were part of it because uh, as, as, as a buy-buying hub, as a startup company, we are the one who's helping these traditional resorts and uh, hotels to uh, pivot or transform into a co-working and co-living hub. That's, the, that's why we are uh, fortunate to, uh, to travel you know, across the country with my team to, to see what's going on and to, uh, to assess. And uh, having said that, this led us to our community you know, who uh, we uh, listen because they're the one who actually uh, suggested that, uh, you know, we, we, we have these activities, uh, very community-centered activities, and one of those are the Nomad Workation Retreat. And okay, so so this year it's happening in Chargo, where I'm right now. Um, definitely yes. a great place for, for surfing, I can tell you that. And the island yeah. itself is really beautiful. You've got small beaches all over the place. It's quite a big island, so you've got a lot of stuff to do. Um, so, yes. Oli, what can you tell us about um, what's going to happen in that week? What kind of guests you have um, and, you know, what kind of activities specifically? Um, and also, if people can stay after, if you have, like, any kind of, like, post-program uh, events or, you know, because obviously traveling to the Philippines, it takes requires some time and some money because it's far from Europe and the U.S., for example. And if people want to stay more than a week, maybe maybe they, they have to think they maybe should be staying about like two or three weeks instead. It's a five-day activity. So basically, it's a workation thing. So it's combined of workshops. You know, at the same time, we have a co-working uh, community day because uh, some of the participants were expecting 50% uh, domestic nomads and 50% are foreigners, no? And as you yeah. can see, you're in Shergao, you will, you will see a lot of uh, long stay. I would say uh, nomads uh, in, Shur in Shurigao. And uh, having said that, so the, the activity would uh, will be a uh, play around on workshops. You know, mm -hmm. we'll be having, uh, we invited speakers from uh, Germany, US, Thailand, and Japan, no? To, uh, mm -hmm. and, and this is also their first time. 
uh, to, to cover in the Philippines. That's why it's exciting for us. And what kind of yeah. topics will you cover orally? Yeah, so we're going to cover about uh, digital nomad lifestyle. Uh, we're going to cover Web3, blockchain, mm -hmm. uh, nice. crypto, and uh, of course, the about the investing in the Philippines as a foreigner because we uh, we got a request from our uh, international nomads that uh, you know would like to know about what if they wanted to set up a co-living or co-working space what if the the foreigner wanted to uh, invest you know in the philippines so those are the topics that we're going to tackle and um and uh, and uh, also the the health and wellness so we can have a uh, you know uh, yoga and uh, breathing exercise or breathing yoga also and um with this uh, our community there that we met in in La Union, and aside from that, uh, the, the topics uh, because we want to be a hybrid as well. So we're gonna attempt. <laughs> Obviously, the internet, you know, um, it is very challenging as well. But a uh, good thing now we can do the Zoom. Um, we we will do a startup as well. We involve the startup uh, community also because yep. uh, right now our government is started to explore the digital nomad and startup opportunities. Yeah. I've seen there is also discussion about the potential digital nomad visa in the Philippines, which is yes. great to hear. Um, yes. So that's that's another good news for uh, for the community in the Philippines. Um, that's cool, really. that, that sounds really interesting. So five full days, how is the program going to be? Is it, um, is it uh, like five hours a day or like can people also work while they're doing the retreat? How do you think about that? So yeah, so the program the, uh, the program is uh is, is balanced because we don't want the people to burn out, you know, the whole day workshop. So basically, on day one, uh, as soon as they arrive, we're gonna have a networking night, you know, just mm -hmm. to get to know each other, pre-registration. The intense workshop would be the second day, which is yep. September 18. So it's gonna be uh, 10 a.m. to uh, 4 p.m. So because this is a one-day uh, intense workshops, you know, from uh, different countries, you know, or different speakers, and the second day. Uh, we're going to post a schedule, but they're not obliged to join because some okay. of them are working. Obviously, yep. you know, we provide this flexibility. Uh, but again, uh, some of them already made a uh, leave, so they will join us. But again, uh, based on our experience, since it's a nomad workation, there are still people working, you know, like 10%, exactly. 1%. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, so so the activity would definitely uh, on, on balance of working one day uh, workshops with like a Four hours workshop on the September 18, and we we're gonna po we we have activities island hopping, surfing, and uh, other uh, community activities that we would like them to I would like them to introduce to other community as well because and, and, and uh, the activities uh, the activities will be paid separately. They're not part of the ticket itself, right? Uh, yes, yes. Just just uh, thank you for uh, reminding me, Andrew. So the the, the tickets is uh, uh, definitely for the workshop. And you know we have a lunch there; it's included, and you know snacks. But again, so the independent activities that we're gonna post is uh, it's up to them if they want to join us as a group. So we're gonna of you're gonna pay for your own because uh, again we we provide them an options and free will because we need to understand that uh, majority of them are remote workers and they have other projects to uh, work with. Absolutely. I'm, I'm pretty sure some people that will come at the retreat will still have to work on their own business or as employees. Yeah. So, uh, yes. yeah, make, make sure you make sure you manage that well. I'm talking to the viewers now because, yeah, it's it's a lot of stuff to do here on the island. So you might get distracted yes. from work. Um, talking yes, about yes, the island, only, so what what can you tell us about um, the Philippines, how to get here, um, how to get to Shargo and activities around other islands that people can explore um, and so on and so forth? So yeah, um, so the, so coming to Shergao is uh, if you're if you're coming for Europe or Thailand or Southeast Asia, there's there's a way you know uh, there, there's a two way. First, uh, you're gonna go to Manila, or you know there's a flight uh, coming from Manila or uh, coming from uh, Angeles. Cebu, no part. I think. Yeah, yeah, also and, Cebu, and then yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, also in Cebu. So from Manila and in Cebu, uh, you, you're gonna have a connecting flight going to Shergao. So basically, uh. For the foreigners, you're gonna do like uh, two uh, connecting flights, you know, because uh, we are we're assuming uh, also, of course, Filipino they know how to get there. But for the foreigners, if you're coming, definitely gonna stop either in Cebu or Manila, and from there you're gonna take another plane or there's a connecting flight going to uh, Shergao. 
And, yeah, um, there, there is an airport on Shargao, so you can, if you're coming from Europe, you can fly to Manila or you can fly to Thailand, and then you still have to go through Cebu or Manila in most of the cases. Yes. And then, and then the flight, the flight is about an hour from Cebu, and I think from Manila about an hour and a half or something like that. So it's not that bad. Um, and then you've got the pickup from the airport. You guys will arrange anyway. It's, it, the island is easy to navigate, so it's no problem. Um, yeah. I think, yeah. Um, so, sorry, go go ahead on the on the details about Philippines and and Cebu, Oli. Yeah. What um, else do they have yeah. to know? So yeah, I am on a, on a perspective of a uh, digital nomad or remote worker. Um, if, if we're talking about beautiful islands and uh, you know amazing people, uh, of course, uh, as a Filipino, I would say uh, uh, we we can uh, we can communicate with you guys and showing you around how the, the beaches and the mountains and the resort. But on a perspective of coming here, also we want everyone also to do your research because uh, as you can see, we have also a remote. Uh, islands you know why I'm, you, you know what i mean that is not touristy and um in shirgo in particular you, um, ha, you you can go to pacifico which is what what i would like it's not a touristy area because everyone now focus on general luna but we yep. have you know we have del carmen we have the pilar in shirgo and we have this uh, pacifico in burgos which is more quiet quiet and island vibe compared to uh uh to, 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 to city. so yeah and you know the palawan and uh, we have the uh, Sikihor, underrated. Uh, it's very quiet. We have Dumaguete. We have Bohol. Boracay is okay, but uh, for for the fact that I met a lot of international di uh, digital nomad, uh, uh, you know, around the world, uh, they don't like that sometimes the tourist. But Boracay, one of my favorite, also, you know, as a, as an island to to visit because it's the infrastructure is uh, available because it's it's a tourist yeah. place and there's so many uh, big resorts and hotels. So you will not be uh, that the internet will be not be a problem compared ten years ago, stay and then compared to Shergao as well. You know we we improve our digital infrastructure. Yeah, but so yeah, so, so many that, things to do. Yeah. Because I'm here, I can confirm obviously what you've said. So the the surfing vibe is great. A lot of surfing instructors. If people want to try, yeah. no problem. The waves are still good. I think in September they're even better. Um, yeah. There's some really remote beaches, as you said, that up north and also. Uh, west i think um so you have a lot of things to do um and also the surfing community is great their parties in the evenings um you know people are super friendly and very helpful indeed so that's great you're gonna feel like home people speak english very well compared to where i've been before in vietnam and thailand so that's not yes yes um the i think the language barrier is very small here compared to other places in asia because i don't know i feel very you know it feels a bit like in europe people speak english as well um, yeah. So it's great. Uh, you, you, you will feel definitely very well here. Um, yeah. In terms of exploring other islands, there's some packages from what I've seen. Um, so you can get like a, you know, like one day package, two day package. You can visit the islands around. Or as you've said, Oli, if you want to go to other places, you will have to fly. I think you have to either take the ferry to Bohol or fly. Palawan also you have to fly is quite far. So for some of the excursions, you'll have to, to fly. And obviously we need some time. So I would suggest if people come for the retreat in, uh, in September, make sure to take another week or two extra. So I would say in total, maybe spend like two or three weeks, including the retreats. Yes, yes. That's what we uh, also uh, shared to them that if you're going to go to Chicago, make it one week, at least two weeks, because uh, yeah, you it's going to so worth it. It's going to worth it. And there's so many uh, activities to, 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 to experience and to explore. Yeah, and what I like about the Philippines at the moment is it's like, like a pre-Bali moment or pre-Thailand. Pre uh, I heard that, yes. Yeah. Everyone, everyone tries to put it like that because it's still very authentic. You've got some nice coffee shops, but not too many. Uh, people are very friendly. You know, there's not too much development. So if you want to experience like Bali 20 years ago, like Thailand 20 years ago, this is the place to be. Uh, with with very well English, so um, I think I think it's definitely worth the the trip, and you're gonna love Philippines, um, and you should again stay stay more than you know like a week, maybe a few weeks, and uh, enjoy work, uh, meet people, network, and you know enjoy nature. It's so beautiful here; it's fantastic. Thank you, Andrew, for helping me. <laughs> no yeah, worries, no I worries, agree, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. It's great. It's great. So, um, what what else? What what else would you like to mention? Like, why should people come to the retreats? 
um, tell us a bit about the pricing model and I can then, you know, talk about the prices on the island as well because I'm already here. Yeah. So, um, so the, the, the retreat would be, uh, we get various topics like, you know, we wanted to help them, of course, to, uh, to, you know, to grow their personal career and business growth, right? So that's, that's, the, uh, that's the topic we're all about in the retreat, you know, by uh, uh, sharing this uh, blueprint, you know, to, from the invited speakers who are experts who have done it successfully uh, uh, that came from uh, Germany and, of course, well, Filipino also, you know. Uh, so th that's what you expect. Aside from, of course, the the, the amazing uh, uh, diversity, you know, sharing culture because it's it's not all about having an intense workshop. But it's I, be, I in my personal point of view is uh, to build these meaningful connections to everyone and to embrace this diversity. So, only uh, what can you tell us about the pricing model? Um, what should people pay for? What's including the basic package? And then we can talk about other prices. Yeah, so so the the, the the tickets is um you can to around two hundred dollars or how much that in pesos like thirteen thousand pesos and for, what's uh, for a ticket. That? Uh, yeah, thirteen thousand pesos. I uh, helped me this to convert in dollar and the uh, inclusions of course is the event pass ticket in mm -hmm. uh, in our workshop which includes the you know we have a, a venue conference for lunch and snacks at the same time it includes as well the, the ticket with our breakout session networking session you know with a uh, with a drink that they could uh, get you know when they uh, when they join us and mm -hmm. of course uh, this also that the access of uh, joining us you know with a uh, different community that we invited to participate because uh, part of our uh, program is we also invite the other uh, for example tour insure girl it's not lonely us to complete the ecosystem and the experience because uh, you know they uh, they know more than us as a local so yeah um i hope i was able to answer your question uh, and, and so okay so in, uh, in terms of accommodation and working space can you help there and i guess that's a that's a separate that's a separate cost right? yes so the the the, the co-working space is a separate cost and um right now uh, we are working with uh, with them you know because uh right now i cannot disclose but they, uh, they're, they're gonna help and support because this is the first time to happen mm -hmm. in shergao and uh, we are asking for the sort, you know, to give to give an access or discounts, you know, to to embrace this kind of community that we are uh, sharing to them. And yeah, you are right. Um, but 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 we have uh, discounts that we will uh, soon uh, mm -hmm. uh, announce and, and for, once for for accommodation. Is there a list of, of places that you propose, or or how how yeah. should people get a place? So the accommodations we have partners, you know, of course, uh, not every, you know, there's no one size fits all to traveler or normals, right? So I, I'm just going to give you a, a range from accommodation room, you know. So the room for for dorm is a range around 700 pesos. How much that's is about dollars? 10, it's about $10, $12 per night. Yeah, yes. so that, yeah that's, that's the rate for the dorm. And for the private room, we have like uh, from 2,000 pesos a night, you know, for a private room, good for two person. And um, of course, we, uh, we once they... Uh, once they uh, sign up, we will send them email and options, no? So the price range would be for the room accommodation. Normally, we prepared uh, two options, no? Or three. From 700 yeah. pesos, uh, so 2,000 pesos. Yeah, $10. $30. 30 yeah, and, and then we have a very nice, comfortable, you know, if you're kind of wanted to have a nice uh, room in huge, we have 5,000 to 7,000 pesos a night. So those That's about $100. Are, yeah. yeah, those are the price range that they could uh, uh, choose from. And again, we have inquiry just to add, Andrew. Of course, they, if they wanted to stay longer for a month, uh, normally we say them, you know, live like a local, so we could help them to provide an apartment, you know, for uh, for uh, twenty thousand pesos to thirty thousand pesos a month. That's about three hundred dollars, I think. Yes. Yeah. And also, yeah. what I can confirm is that a lot of guest house is available. So if people want to stay afterwards, two, one, two more week or three more weeks, yeah. they can easily find the place here. The rooms yes. all over the place. You've got small resorts, which is great because they're, you know they're not really big, so they're not the big chains are not here. Again, it's that's really cool actually. Um, in terms of the pricing, I can tell you it's pretty affordable. It's not as cheap as you think, but I think it's cheaper than Europe and definitely cheaper than the States. So coffee is like a dollar, a meal can be like three, four dollars. Um, yeah. You know, renting a scooter for a month, it's about a hundred dollars. Renting a surfboard is about a hundred dollars. 
So I would yeah. say, you know, if you want to spend about a month, maybe like $1,200 will cover you well, um, depending again on the accommodation. But if it's extremely accessible um, and, you know, you've got good coffee, you've got nice pastries, you've got uh, nice barbecue. So um, it, it's all here. Thank awesome. you. You are the right person right now because you're in your present. You are in present in Shergao. Oh my God, exactly. I missed that because I'm gonna I'm gonna come back in Shergao on June. But yeah, thank you. Andrew. Yeah, awesome, Maria. No worries. You're welcome. So, anything else that um, that you want people to mention? Um, you know, like an extra reason to come to the Philippines. Um, you know, what what makes this event so special? The Filipino people, the hospitality, the warm, you know, the culture. And um, having having that experience in Shergao and different islands of in the Philippines made you uh, made you think, and it's hard to, uh, to to explain the experience, you know, especially if you're a foreigner, because uh, that's what makes us uh, unique as well. And uh, to complete the experience, uh, uh, definitely the the community and the people, because as a traveler or if you're romantic, we always have this, you know, good beach, mountains, food, and everything, right? But uh, uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's the experience of the culture and the people. How are they uh, embrace us or welcome you as a, uh, as a as a like a guest in our country? Yeah, yeah, that definitely the experience is great. People are super friendly here, at least compared to Europe. I'm comparing it to yeah, that. I know, I know, your reserve, you know, yeah. Other um, places in Western Europe, uh, there is a lot of live music. You know, you feel like you're alive. There's a lot of yeah. you know people singing here all the time. There's a singing culture, a pop culture, which is fantastic. Um, definitely a place to explore. There are a lot of islands over here. You can travel between them by ferry or by plane. Um, yeah. And we really want you to experience Philippines because I, th I think it's a great place personally. So I'm, I'm definitely going to be back very soon. Please. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Andrew. You should do that. Thanks, yeah. Thanks a lot for all the details. So how can people um, how can people get in touch with the event? I'm going to definitely put a, a link in the YouTube description here. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put all the socials so people can follow you. But how can they get in touch with you and Bay Bay Hub? Yeah. So thank you so much, Andrew, you know, and Remote Tribe, you know, for helping us and supporting our project here in the Philippines. So everyone, guys, if you, uh, I would like to invite you to join us in our Nomad Workation Retreat in Shergao. So you can visit our website, nomadworkationretreat.com. And uh, you can uh, you can see the, the link here. We're going to post it here by Andrew. And it's going to be on September uh, 18 to 22. By the way, it's also an international surfing competition and fiesta. Oh, now, okay, before I forget, it's a fiesta. Oh, you, you, you need to experience the fiesta in Shergao. It's amazing. And uh, we're expecting a lot of uh, world... Uh, World class surfer, you know, around the around the world, because it's uh, we have the one of the best uh, or good waves uh, here in in Shergao on September 18 to 22. Yeah. Fantastic! Thanks a lot, Tuli. Hopefully, people will see the potential in this event, and uh, I wish you a lot of fun over there. It's going to be fantastic. Thank you so much, Andrew, and you too. Enjoy Shergao. Yeah. Salamat. Bye, Bye. Salamat. Bye. Salamat.